Okay, so this is the messy outside of my apartment. I just live in a small apartment since I'm a student. And this is the bike. My bike touring fat bike. So it's a 907 um, steel frame, I guess. But I have belt drive and I have the Rollhof Speed Hub 14 gear. It's a great system because you switch gear instantly and you can do that with a load on the bike and torque on the pedals. Uh, I don't have the biggest panniers but they do the work. Um, I don't remember the name of the rear rack, pannier rack, but it's Swiss made. Take up to 30 kilos. Uh, what I have on top is a 45 liter backpack and the long tube is my fly fishing rod. So, got the frame bag, gas tank bag, all that accessory. Because in the beginning I did bike packing, so I didn't have the pannier racks. But I don't go places to go fast, I go to have a good time and hang out and make a good base camp. I also have a hub dynamo, but it's not connected at the moment, I had some issues. So I sent the whole, all the lights and the USB charger and everything away. So that's about it. Usually I have my GPS on top here. And I usually have the camera in one of the feeding bags and other accessory I need instantly. But since I'm gonna park downtown, I don't want that to be like in the open for people to steal. What I'm excited about is this rear mirror that I attached yesterday, how well it works. We'll see. Okay. So I just bought some goddamn expensive walking poles. I'll give you a demonstration later. It's Lecky. Uh, type with a wire in between so they get it pretty short. Uh, what I experienced so far is that the front panniers are way too heavy so I have to move heavy food stuff to the rear panniers or the steering wheel gets too shaky. So I now can give you a view of Buda City. And I will turn on my GPS now so I have a track of average speed and distance and so on. This is the hill I've been not looking forward to, uh, but when it's done, it's done, and it's actually not as bad as I remember it. I don't know if you can see it up there. There's almost a 90 degree turn, and it goes up between those two hilltops. So I'll be fine.
Okay, so there's always challenges. Uh, the weather is pretty bad. Uh, the sleeping bag I have is too thin. So <laughs> I have put on almost all the clothes I have. Mm, it's pretty wet, I guess you can see. And the sleeping mat is leaking. It's starting to get old. It's like over 10 years old, I guess. So I really hope I don't have to buy a new one. But we'll see. I'll try to get some more sleep. <laughs> Okay, so everything has its flaws. This I should have videotaped before I adjusted it, but what I've done is that I reduced the one pole so I get the drainage point because when they were both poles were equally elevated, there was a dump in the middle where the water collected and that wouldn't have worked through the night. So if you want to sleep with this when it rains, you kind of need to shorten one of the poles so you get a drainage point. Well, now it's night. Good night. So the weather is definitely better now. Uh, as you can see, almost blue skies. Um, but I still expect some rain through the day. I will leave my tent here. And so it can dry out a little bit. I left most of my gear, so I only have my fishing gear for fishing in the ocean. And I will head up this road. Uh, I think it's a kilometers or something one way see if I get some fish and I go back pack, uh, eat lunch and then start to head home again so but it's I was almost depressed with all the rain this morning um, yeah as you can see it's a bit um, it's a dome the tent is in a uh, little bit of a downhill and it's flattening out here where I pitched the tent, so the water kind of accumulated here a little bit. Um, but I'll give you a review of the tent later. I think there are some tips and tricks I need to learn about this tent. So, we'll see. Let me head off.
I left most of my gear, so I only have my fishing gear for fishing in the ocean. And I will head up this road. Uh, I think it's approximately 12 kilometers or something one way. See if I get some fish and I'll go back, back to eat lunch and then start to head home again. So but it's I was almost depressed with all the rain this morning. Um, yeah, as you can see, the pit um, is a dome. The tent is in a little bit of a downhill, and it's flattening out here where I pitched the tent. So the water kind of accumulated here a little bit. Um, but I'll give you a review of the tent later. I think there are some tips and tricks I need to learn about this tent. So, we'll see. Let me head off. This is great, great timing. Oh my god, I'm so tired now. It's gonna be super hard on the other side. So I think I will actually have to push the bike some of the hills. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I have a barbecue date at the beach close to Buda where I spend tonight. And tomorrow it's back to work. Okay, so already made some videos yesterday about from the tent, but I was pretty tired and it was raining heavily. So I will try to render this or edit it so I get those videos into this one uh, because there are some good points. Uh, this tent is really hard to pitch when it's gusty like now, especially if you want a certain orientation. 
So I think what you have to do is kind of anchor it down on each peg uh, on each side of the vestibule. Seems to be the, the best way to get the tent oriented. As you can see, the sides are They are really exposed if there's a small elevation in the back of the tent and you got and you get contact between the outer tarp and the inner tent. Um, how to solve that? I don't know. It seems when you have all the guy lines out and anchor them down with really good pegs, it seems stable enough, but I'm starting to think I regret buying this tent. I should have bought a self-standing tent. They are less vulnerable for stuff like this. As you can see, I have no clue on how to fix this. And even the tent poles are a bit We'll have to see. Now I will put up the vestibule and you can see how it looks. So now it's a vestibule up and as you can see the whole tent is bending and it's not that windy. So this whole tent is just a bit fragile in every way. I mean this is not good enough at all so for you other people on YouTube that have made reviews of this tent I recommend you start using the equipment in proper weather before you give reviews because then you will have experienced the same things I have but let's see after another night in this tent and how it works out, but I'm definitely thinking for my long expedition to go for the Rainsfjell. So we'll see.